Hello everyone, today is Friday, August 17th. It's 2.27 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's about an hour and a half before the regular session close. On my right is my computer clock. On my left is the time in sales, the E-mini S&P, currently trading at 2853.50. Okay, everyone, I have a special guest with me uh, here today, a longtime user of the uh, auto trader came out to visit me here in Maui and he's here with us today his name is Bob and Bob's been using the auto trader for quite a while and he qualified for a combine in top step many of you have heard of t uh, top step before and so I'm gonna have Bob say a few words here first I want to show a screenshot and then we'll hear from Bob about how he uh, set this up and what he did Okay, so here's a, a screenshot of Bob's top step account. What was your approach in configuring the auto trader and how did you come to qualify for the combine? Well, Randy, I really think my breakthrough was when I finally just decided to focus on one market. You know, I was running many models and uh, with mixed results and I finally just decided to focus on gold so I could really key in on my settings because I understood the way it worked every day. Um, and as you see here in the screenshot, this is step one of the combine. And then one of the things to note here is the average win trade you're in for over an hour. I found that as a, a trader who was trying to do non-automated, I could never stay with a winning trade as long. But I finally had my breakthrough when I let the auto trader run and actually shut down the screen and didn't watch it. And I'd log in at the end of the day to, to see what it did. And I really got those long winning trades. Okay, sounds good. Thanks for that. I think uh, a lot of traders share the same issue of holding a trade, um, myself included. We all know that our indicator, as simple as it is, when the bars turn blue and you get a run for 10 points, most traders can't hold that trade for 10 points, but the auto trader can, and that's one of the things that automation brings to the table. Once you enter the trade, there's only so much to do. Uh, you're either going to hit your targets or you're going to get stopped out. Okay, so what you see here, Randy, is the second phase or second step of Top Step Trader. It's called Funded Trader Prep. So the rules get even tighter. You can only lose so much money per day. And having the max loss per day in the auto trader really gave me the confidence to know that I would not break the rule because in this combine you're allowed to lose $500 a day and I just went into your auto trader and told it if I get to $450, just stop for the day. So that's how I was able to, to stay within the rules and the risk parameters. Okay, excellent. Okay, so this is the uh, gold contract that Bob's been trading in the combine. And you can see the equity curve. There's winning and losing days. But if we uh, go back to that uh, combine report, so looking at the uh, trade report, we can see uh, the average winning day was 585 and the average losing day was 372 and you got your best and worst day stats so one of the things the auto trader brings to the table is we have a huge section on risk management which is our trade management folder or tab with all the money management settings and this allows you to uh, manage your risk and have a limit have a loss limit and a profit goal for each day and that really helps to control your risk. Yeah, Randy, and you know, like I said before, I actually run this on an Amazon web server because I can't rely on my connection at home. So one of the things I can do is let it run and shut it off and I know you can see that worst day right there, 497.40, that was with commissions. Um, the auto trader flawlessly uh, stopped trading for the day. Had it not done its job, then I would have been kicked out of the combine and I would have had to start all the way over. Okay, so back to our equity curve here. Pretty nice equity curve, really minor drawdown. And as we uh, got up here, we, we had a little bit of a uh, sideways, uh, you know, slight drawdown here. But the auto trader recovered from that. You can see it didn't really last too long. So what is this uh, line in the center, how this works here on the equity curve? Uh, the line in the center is really just an average in Ninja Trader. But if you look here um, at the date on the bottom, I ran um, step one in February. And, uh, you know, that's right in here. And then I went right into step two. That was here as well. And uh, now that I'm in my funded account, what actually happened here in, in May is the gold volatility really slowed down. So the model just kind of went sideways and it's picked up again. And now we're at almost an all-time equity high again. 
I think one of the main things to take away from here is that Bob focused on trading one contract. And I've always liked that idea. Personally, myself, I've focused on the E-mini S&P for most of my 20-year trading career. When you trade a single market, you get to know that market and all the nuances. And even though it's automation, that can help you with adjusting your settings in such a way that you are kind of familiar with how that market acts and then you're going to adjust your settings accordingly. Trading a single market can help you to better know that market and adjust your settings accordingly because you know how big the swings are and what a outlier day might look like. Uh, you have a better idea of what to expect from the daily ranges and so forth. Okay, I know I'm going to get a million questions about this. Please don't post it here on the YouTube channel. Email me directly to my email address, which is systems at Blue Wave Trading. It's also on the website. So please direct your questions to me uh, directly. Okay, uh, Fridays are kind of hit or miss with the auto trader. Today was pretty decent, not really exceptional, but uh, decent. So uh, first up, we have the... 233 Heike and Ashi chart on the DAX. And what I did different about this chart than the 150 tick Heike and Ashi on the DAX that has been super consistent is that I made this a limit order with a larger pullback. So this is actually missing some trades. I also have a much larger profit target. So this is not really going for the shorter swings. And you can see that here, this would have been probably seven or eight hundred dollars on two contracts here, but it, but my, my stops are pretty loose. So mostly going for larger moves on this chart. And that seemed to pay off because it hit its goal of 25.50. It did 25.12, probably had some slippage here with our market order. Uh, note the signals on the indicators here, uh, pretty good signals all the way around. So this is only the second time we've seen this. So two days in a row, it hit its goal. Okay, next up is the crude on a 987 tick chart. This is trading three contracts. We had uh, three trades here. This is using our line break logic. You can see the line break signal here. We had a small loser here. It looks like we drew down 200 per contract, actually about 135 per contract. And then a couple of winners here. A uh, total of four trades, actually. And then we came up and did 1280 for the day. Our goal on this one is 1300 So we definitely hit our goal and had a couple of ticks slippage with our market order at the end. OK, the mid cap on 150 Heike and Ashi chart. Uh, again, Heike and Ashi uh, showing the way here. This hit its goal in a single trade and had almost twice the distance to go. This looks like a measured move here. So I took my Fibonacci tool and uh, measured this swing and then measured this swing. And as you can see, uh, these two swings from here to here and here to here uh, is 100%. And the market also, the market often trades very symmetrically. This is a, a shining example. Okay, next up is the E-mini S&P, and this did 12.50 for the day. This is a, a limit order with a three-tick pullback, and we also cancel the trade if we don't get filled within three bars. So notice that uh, with our limit order, it's not taking every swing here. And that's one of the key benefits of using a limit order. We didn't get filled on our limit fill here on the next bar. There's no tail. Notice the fills on these bars, we have a tail. So you don't end up taking every single swing. Uh, same thing here, even though this was a loser, this might have been break even or maybe even a loss of a couple of ticks. But it didn't take this swing either. Anyway, really nice performance on this chart of 12.50 for the day on only two contracts. Okay, the DAX on our 377 Heike and Ashi chart. This looks like it had a single trade on two contracts with pretty excellent trade placement. By the looks of this, it looks like we could go a little larger on our limit fill, but nevertheless, 
this hit its goal of 1,500 with one tick of slippage on a single trade. Okay, the crude on our Superenco 8 tick with our line break logic. This has been very consistent for us. Here it is again. Uh, we drew down about 200 per contract and came back and hit our goal of 1,000 with one tick of slippage. Okay, the NASDAQ on a five-minute chart had a single trade, two contracts, and this did 595 for the day. Okay, next is the crude on the Precision Ranko chart. This is the only chart I plot with the Precision Ranko, and this has been really, really consistent. If you look at our videos for like the last seven days, you'll see this chart almost every day, and this looks like it hit its goal of 1,000 and had one tick of positive slippage. Okay, another chart of the E-mini S&P Superenco 6 tick with slightly different settings. This one has a goal of 1,000 and it hit its goal and had one tick of slippage. Okay, still uh, trying different settings on the Russell. I was plotting a Superenco 7 tick and I scrapped that chart in favor of a Superenco 10 tick with a higher time frame of a Superenco 10 tick with a little bit higher sensitivity. And this uh, did pretty good today. It, uh, our goal is 1,500, so well shy of its goal, but still did a respectable 535 on two contracts. Okay, the gold contract on a 233 Heike and Ashy chart had a single trade good for 520 for the day. I take that back. There were several trades here. We had a small loser drew down less than $100, and then what looks to be another winner that brought us back to break even, and then this winning trade here. Okay, the E-mini S&P on a Superenco 2 tick chart with a four tick higher time frame did 387.50 for the day trading two contracts. Okay, a Super Renko five tick, a regular Renko chart on a five tick has been very good for us. This had two winners and two losers. This one's trading three contracts, uh, ended up with 300 for the day, drew down about 200 per contract midday, but then came back with this trade to finish on the plus side of the ledger. Okay, and then our E-mini S&P on a 987 Heike and Ashy tick chart had uh, several trades today. Looks like it made an equity high of about 700, had a loser here, and then made most of it back and finished at 625 for the day. That's all for today's video. Thanks for watching.